Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to get started with the new input system in Unity 2019.3. Before we get into the video, I'd like to thank my patrons. Without them, these videos wouldn't be possible. With special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, Art Feral, Buddha Ray, and Remy Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link to my patrons down below. Otherwise, there are also links down below to social media accounts such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help me out by following on any of those, that'd be greatly appreciated. Now let's get to the video. So for this video, I'm trying a new kind of format on how I structure the video. So if you like it, let me know down below. Any feedback's appreciated. But anyway, step one, I'm gonna teach you how to install and set up the new input system and get it working with your Unity project. Step two, I'm gonna show you how to hard code it into your scripts, just like you're used to doing if input.getkey down, for example. I'm gonna show you how to do that with the new input system. Then step three, we're gonna be creating an input action asset so we can actually map certain uh, inputs like keyboards, mice, gamepad, joystick, whatever you want, to different actions. Then finally for stage four, I'll show you how to use your input action mappings in your scripts. So your scripts don't know what actual controllers you're using, doesn't matter if it's a keyboard or whether it's a, a gamepad or anything, it just matters that you press jump or shoot or move or whatever. And for jumping and shooting, they happen you know, every so often, we can use uh, events. And then for things that happen every frame, like moving input needs to be taken every frame, we can use polling. So we'll cover that and don't you worry if you don't understand what any of that means because it will be explained. Now let's get to the video. So the last thing to mention is that if you want access to this project, the link to my GitHub is on screen and down below if you want to go download the project to compare your project to mine in case something doesn't work, you know, you can try and figure it out that way before asking in the comments, or you can just have a look around what I've done if you don't actually want to go ahead and code it along with the video. It's up to you, that's down below, have fun with it. Anyway, so make sure you're using 2019.3 or later. You obviously can use an earlier version, but if you use an earlier version, some of the features I'm using might not be here or they might have changed or so on. Um, that's also true if you go for a newer version, stuff might have changed. But regardless, go to Window, Package Manager, and I've removed everything apart from Unity UI, even though I probably don't even need that anyway, but I'm gonna leave it in. And make sure you go to All Packages, and then that'll obviously load all the packages, and go to Show Preview, and then type in Input, and you'll find the input system here. It's in preview 1.0.0 as of making this video. So that's the version I'm gonna be using. If you want to do everything the exact same way as me, then you know use that version. But I'm sure uh, if new versions come out, there won't be too drastic changes. But anyway, go ahead and install that and then I'll get back to you. Okay, once you've installed it, it'll look like this. It'll say it's up to date and there's a tick there. So now you've installed it, but it's not actually usable yet because the actual project entirely uses an input system. So you need to restart your project using the new input system. And the way you do this is you go to file, sorry, you go to edit, project settings, player. And if we scroll down, you'll see down here, we use the input manager old right now. And we want to obviously use the input system package new. So we're going to select that. It says a Unity editor must be restarted for it to take effect. So go ahead and do that. So when your project restarts, that means that the input system is now active. So we can move on to step two. Okay, so for step two, we're gonna make a really simple script to move the player forwards, backwards, left and right, or in all diagonal directions that you want. We're gonna make that inside our scripts folder, attach it to the player, and then set up some really simple logic to get that working. Okay, so go ahead and inside your movement script, we're gonna create a function that gets called every frame via the update method. We're gonna call it move. And inside move, what do we want to do? We're gonna create a vector for our movement. So it's a vector free. And this vector free, we're gonna say vector free movement is a new vector free. So we've got this now and we want to fill in the actual axis values and then we can normalize it at the end. So to get the uh, horizontal and vertical, we're gonna use keyboard.current. Now keep in mind, this isn't the ideal way to actually do movement in a game. This is just a way I'm gonna show you to use the actual uh, hard coded input. So we're gonna say, well, if keyboard and if you look, keyboard is in the Unity engine.input system namespace. It imports that for me automatically. If keyboard.current, and then you want to say, well, which key do you want to check? So we're going to check the W key. Dot is pressed, which is a Boolean to say whether it's pressed right now. So if it is pressed, then we're going to say movement. Dot X. So this is the, sorry, dot Y. Um, we could even go for dot Z because we're not going to be moving on the Y axis. So we can say, well, the Z axis, which is left and right. Um, sorry, forwards and backwards. So forwards is W. We're gonna say plus equals one, okay? And then we can say if keyboard, and we can just copy and paste this multiple times actually. This is just gonna be the, the lazy way of implementing this. So we've got W key, we've got the S key, the A key and the D key, or you could even go WAS, but I'm gonna go the Z axis and the X axis, axes. So X and X. And we're gonna say, well, S key is negative, it's backwards. And A is left. And uh, this is right, so this is actually negative two. A is left. So at the end of this, we'll have a vector of movement. We need to say movement.normalize 
to make sure that if we're moving diagonally, it's not actually moving faster. And then finally, we actually want to move. So we'll just say transform.translate movement. There's a little more than this though, sadly. We've got to have a speed, otherwise it doesn't really know how far to move every frame. By default, it'll move one, but we also want to, we want to be able to tweak that. So serialize field, private float movement speed equals, we'll go five. Then down, down here, we want to times by our movement speed. And we also want to times by time dot delta time so that it's frame rate independent. If you have a higher frame rate, this function's called more and you don't want to move more if you've got higher frame rate because that'd be unfair on people that have, you know, worse machines. And also you would probably move ridiculously fast if you had a supercomputer. But anyway, we've got our player. We're going to go ahead to the inspector and attach the movement script, leave it as five, perhaps press play. And it should, when we move now, move in all the three directions. Now, because of how my camera is and the forwards is this way, we're actually, oh, also, yeah, it works when we haven't got the game selected, which is kind of interesting because normally uh, that isn't actually how the input works in the old system, but that's pretty cool. It's actually something I just learned now, but that's, uh, it's pretty interesting actually. So yeah, that's how we would move using the hard-coded system. You just, you know, check keyboard.current. But we want to be able to make a better system than this. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this script separately so you can have an idea of how to do this when you get the project off GitHub. And then you can also see the new way that I'm gonna use. So let's go ahead with that. Okay, so for step three, we're gonna use an input action asset. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a folder for this just to make it all neat call it maybe input in our root and inside here we're going to create create input actions and we'll just call this uh, controls for our game right and we can actually click generate c sharp class and we can have the class file being an assets input controls that makes sense to me the class name being controls namespace being you know i don't care about the namespace really for this so we're just going to click apply and that makes us a c sharp script auto compiled and what that does is it means that our uh, certain uh, actions and axes are hard coded into this, which allows us then in our script to reference the variables. If you're used to using the old input system, you have to use strings from the input manager and it's not very uh, easy to use. You know, you might type a string wrong and also strings are never a good thing to go by. With this, you don't have to do that. So it's quite kind of handy. But if we open up this asset, you're given this empty box window thing. And I'm going to explain to you how to fill this in now. Okay, so if an action map is kind of like a way of saying, what is the input for? So for example, you might have input for your UI, input for your player, input for body blah, blah, blah. Now we're just gonna make one and call it player, keep it simple. There's our uh, map. And on here, it gives you a default action, a binding, you know, let's just get rid of that for now. So when you make a new action, okay, never mind, it just brings it back anyway, doesn't it? Yeah, also I'd check this auto save as you, just so you don't forget to save it. Um, now this action can be whatever you want, right? Cause it can be a uh, one directional, axis composite so forwards and backwards or two dimensional which is for forwards backwards left and right and also there's you know different things on here so we're just going to make one for for example jumping so if we make jump uh jump is a and then you look on here on action type uh it's a value or a button or whatever so it's a button right jump is just a, a thing you hit so the binding for this jump is just going to be the space key right so we'll type space and we get space keyboard but if you also had another controller and you wanted to make, um, let's also turn off auto save because it compiles every time you change something. Um, if we wanted a different controller to also have, you know, jump on it like you plugged in a gamepad, then what you can do is you can just press um, add a new binding. So you've got two bindings and you just select on here and you can type in whatever you want, right? And you get all these different inputs. It's up to you. Now for me, I'm going to keep it simple and just have space for the jump. We're also going to create a, another new uh, action over here. And this one can be like movement. And this binding, we're actually gonna change it to be a 2D vector composite. So let's get rid of the binding one. And what this allows us to do is um, assign different buttons to be the horizontal and uh, vertical parts. So for up, for me, I'm gonna use the W key on the keyboard. For down, I'm gonna go ahead and use the S key. For left, I'm gonna use the A key. Now, obviously, sometimes when you type certain things, you have to actually go find what you want because um, there's other things with those strings in the search. And then for right, it's the D key. Scroll back up, D keyboard. So I've got all these set up, but obviously, let, let's rename this, for example, um, WASD. But then we also might wanna move using arrow keys. So you can go add another one and you can call it arrows. And then for up, you can go bind the up arrow, down, the down arrow, same for left and same for right. 
And you can add as many of these as you want, right? You set up these, you can use them for different controllers and so on. Let's go ahead and save this. Now we're gonna keep it simple for this video and just have jump and movement. And it's compiled now, okay? So if we go back to this control script, we're not actually gonna go look into it really, but you can see here, we've got all these different mappings, different names down, is this blah, blah, blah. There's so much down here. We can actually go have a quick look if you want. This is all generated for us. We can actually listen into certain things on here and read from here as well, which is kind of useful. So we're gonna go ahead and do that in our script for stage four. Okay, so there's two things I mentioned at the start of this video I'm gonna do for the step. I'm gonna do polling and I'm gonna do events. So events are for stuff like jumping and shooting, which happen every so often. So we're gonna do that really quickly. We're gonna make a jump function here. It has to be public though, uh, for the way we're gonna do it. So public void jump. And I haven't set up a proper character controller and that's not the point in this video. So for jumping, we're just gonna say, um, we'll make a jump height float. And we'll just make it be like two units or something. And all we're gonna do is just say transform.position is equal to a new vector free, transform.position.x, transform.position.y plus the jump height, and then transform.position.z. And I'm gonna make this a bit easier for you guys to read, so it's gonna tab these down. So all I'm doing here is I'm setting our position to be the same, but up on the Y a bit. That's what we're gonna say jumping is, and that's fine how that is, we've written that code. Now, how do we call that? Well, one way we're gonna call it with vents is we can go to our player, attach the movement with asset I've just made. We're gonna add a player input component, which comes from the uh, input system. And we can say, well, our asset is the one we just made controls. The map is player and the behavior is invoking unity events. And then we go down, drop down the unity events for the player. There's also some for um, losing and gaining connection to a certain input, it says here. So device lost and registered, but we want the jump. So if we go jump plus drag in our movement with asset, uh, movement, yeah, movement with asset, we can go down to that script and call jump. Okay, so now if we go ahead and press play and we press spacebar, you notice we teleport up. Now, obviously that happens uh, if you look here if I manage to do this, if I just hold the key down, uh, well, it's every time I press and release the key, actually, that happens. Because um, all it's doing is it's just, oh, it's raising event when something happens with that key. You know, we haven't told it, oh, only on this key down, only on key up, and so on. So we're going to go ahead and fix that now. So the way we fix this for jump, obviously, we only want jump happening on down. Uh, on key down so we can go back to the controls mappings and go to jump and if you see on the side we've got button that's right but we can actually add some more stuff to this so if we go to interactions we can add um press and on press you can have press only press only uh, sorry release only and press and release we obviously want press only so if we change that to press only and we press save before we close it and we press play when it's compiled you'll notice that when i press spacebar it doesn't do it on release and press just on press right press release when I released it didn't do anything right obviously you'd have proper jump code there but that's just an example of how to call events from the input uh, asset and then finally we actually want to use the polling so you can actually technically do it using the events but it's not a good idea because you shouldn't use events for things that happen every single frame you should use uh, actual polling so inside here we're gonna have a private reference to our actual input that we wrote ourselves so we called it controls so if you go on controls uh, here it is and then we can call it you know controls equals null um, you can't actually set this in the inspector. You have to do it through code. Uh, we have to make a new instance of it, but you can't do it in the constructor. You have to do it uh, on awake or on, on enable, right? So we can say on enable controls equals a new controls. And it's happy with that, but we should actually do it in awake. Sorry. Um, awake happens before on enable. So then on enable, we can say controls.player.enable. So we're saying, all right, on awake, we create an instance of it. And then whenever we, uh, t this object is enabled, we can enable the player controls. And then whenever this is disabled, we will disable the player controls. It's just the way you've got to do it. As far as I'm aware, this is the only way you can do it right now. Um, so let's just, these are all single line things. So let's just shove them all together. And then all we want to do now is actually in our move function, um, we want to do something with the movement input. So what we can actually do is we can say over here, just like our movement from before, let's go grab this. It's a little bit different though, because what we want to do is this um, movement, we want to do it differently. Ideally, what we want to say is 
we want to say movement, but we also want to get movement input. All right, so let's get the movement input. And the movement input is equal to the controls dot player dot movement. Now, it technically doesn't know it's a vector two right now. So we have to say dot uh, read value as a type vector two. Okay, so now this is our movement input, but we want to turn it from a vector two into a vector three with nothing in the Y because we move on the X and Z axis. So we can actually say um, movement dot X is equal to movement input dot X. Okay, so that's left and right. And then um, actually, well, it depends how we're doing on here. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. And then movement uh, dot Z is equal to movement input dot Y because of just how it is. And then we can actually um, simplify this to be like this. Then we normalize the movement and we times it by the movement speed, which we can add back here. So, so let's field private float movement speed equals uh, 5f, I think I went for. And then there we have it. So we read our input value. We then convert it into the format we want. We can actually even just call uh, dot normalized here if we want to cut that down by a little bit. And then now if we go ahead and test this, You'll see now when I press W, S, A, and D, we actually move around. When I press spacebar, we go up because that's how I made the bad jumping. But you get the point. So now we're actually pulling the new input system through the code here. The code doesn't actually know. It's just saying, oh, whatever the movement is, read it as a vector two. Doesn't doesn't care what controller it is or what you know horizontal vertical. Doesn't care about the name. It's hard coded. There's no string references here. So this is great and. They, they are constantly improving the, the input system because it's in preview and they're going to release new things. I'll make new videos about it in the future. If you guys want any more videos on this, then feel free to let me know down below. If you could help support me, as I said at the beginning, that'd be greatly appreciated. I uh, hope you like the new you know, format of video. Um, hopefully, I, I mean, I kind of enjoyed making it. So after I've uploaded it, I'll see what you guys think. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.